friends. This is Amanda. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Oakland County, Michigan. I'm an A7 size girl in an A2 size world. That means I make five by seven cards. We're gonna play with these Seaside Wishes and we're going to use the sentiment from Sweetly Scripted, the happy birthday. If um, you do not have a demonstrator and you're placing an order in May of 2024, if you could just take note of my host code, that would be helpful. Doesn't cost you anything, it just helps my small business along. And if you need um, the sizes, the dimensions for four and a quarter by five and a half, just let me know in the um, in the comment section below and I will grab those for you. If there's enough of you, just let me know and I will start putting them on the screen. Okay, so like I said, we're going to use the Sweetly Scripted Happy Birthday, but there's also this really fun Speedy Recovery and Happy Anniversary. And those are great for, you know, sentiments that we don't have a lot of. The Happy Birthday, you know, we have lots of Happy Birthday, but Speedy Recovery, I think this is the only set and I think uh, the... Um, the happy anniversary, I think this might be the only set too. We're gonna take the Seaside Wishes bundle, which comes with a hybrid embossing folder, and we're going to die cut and cut those out, die cut and emboss those out. And then we will take the swirly, I think this is called swirly embossing folder. It's the large one, I love this one, especially for um, five by seven cards. And we're going to use uh, a four and a quarter by six and, six and a quarter panel to cut, um, to emboss that out. I also cut out in, so in, I use beige, which is just the first time I used beige for those sand dollars. And then for those other white things, those other sea urchin -y things, I use white for those. I'm gonna take a piece of basic white that is about six and a half by four and a half. And I'm going to make my own designer series paper it's called So Swirly, not Swirly, sorry. So Swirly is the embossing folder. I had to look that up. And in Petal Pink, um, on this piece of basic white, I'm going to do some random stamping to make, our, to make my own designer series paper. You know, I'm not good at random stamping. I'm actually pretty bad at it. I might be the worst person at random stamping there is, but I'm going to um, start with a larger piece of paper than I need. And then so I thought I could, you know, cut down to make it something that is actually interesting. I use my stamp and Pearson mat, my stamping piercing mat, because this is a lot of solid photopolymer stamp. So use your stamp and piercing mat and a piece of um, uh, scrap paper, I guess, or, you know, so you can stamp off the edges because that always looks good. Even though you are, we are cutting this down to size, um, I'm leaving some white space for the smaller of the starfish. I don't know what I called this before, but I'm stamping the starfish in petal pink. So I'm using, I'm leaving some white space for that smaller starfish. And then there's also a little, um, little splatters that I thought was maybe sand or something like that. And I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm going to stamp that in crumb cake. So you know, you know, not very hard to stamp these down there. They come out great, but it's, I, mm -mm, yeah, I'm just terrible at random stamping. So I did not have this video as a voiceover. Unfortunately, I had changed my microphones recently and I changed back because I didn't like it. But anyways, I moved my microphones around and I forgot to turn the volume up on the one that I always use. So... We're doing a voiceover, sorry about that. Um, so you might be seeing me uh, maneuvering with my hands because I'm a, I'm a hand talker. Um, and so that is why. Uh, I really like this sweetly scripted, you know, the long variations of the words. I really like that. And the Seaside Wishes is so, so, so fun. This is one of the first things I picked up. Um, I love it. So really glad that um, there's a hybrid folder for this. They turn out great. So I'm going to cut this down to six and a quarter by um, three inches. And then I'm going to mat it with some petal pink. Um, oh, did I not already do my little spots? I guess I have one more little area that could use some. Oh, good heavens. I'm going to mat it on a piece of um, petal pink that is just a quarter of an inch larger. So that is um, three and an eighth 
by six and three eighths. I'm just gonna use my, uh, my Sweet Petunias, sorry, glue, Precision Glue Press. And if you don't have one, if you love one, I'd appreciate it if you, you would if you would use my friend's affiliate link that helps her. Uh, I don't have affiliate link, but I, I cut this wrong. That's why um, I, I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm not selling them. But uh, my friend Lori Heiling, which is my upline, is uh, I know there's lots of us that sell it because it's so great. Or I know there's lots of people selling it because it's so great. Lots of people using it. And you can fill, um, you get a bottle with any glue. You got an, a bottle, an empty bottle with, uh, so you can use any glue that you want. And you also get a, um, a glue. I don't wonder how many milligrams this is of the Nuvo glue from Tonic. It is eight, maybe eight milliliters. Mm, I don't know, but my glue is getting down there. I'm going to have to um, get another one. I really like this glue. It, it's just, it's very similar to art glitter glue. So really like it. Um, you could also order a, another um, empty glue and a precision glue. You know what I mean? You, you could order another tip and the precision and the empty bottle. So the, the um, there's two tips that come with this, a regular one and then a, you know, a fine tip one. So I'm just going to use some of this liquid glue to place my sand dollars down. I'm doing some tucking and that's why I only put adhesive in the middle because then I can tuck where I want to and I'll just make a little, you know, cluster here. And then I don't know what these are supposed to be. I know they're supposed to be, I don't think they're supposed to be sand dollars. I don't know. If, Whatever they are, they're really cool. And I like them. I know they're supposed to, maybe they're supposed to go on top of the sand. I, you know what? I don't know. But I like, I, these are individual little sea urchins as far as I am concerned. Maybe they're, um, sponge or something. I don't know. Anyways, they're individual little sea urchins. I made them in white because I didn't know what else to do. I think they look great. And then I'm going to, um, add my sentiment strip here and I'm going to remind me I want to use this ribbon that I forget but I do remember at the end that I want to use some of this ribbon and I'm just going to cut probably three inches worth um but anyways I'm going to stamp my sentiment in my misty because it's easier for me and we I mean this is a long a long sentiment I really like it um so I'm going to put that in my misty I have an inch piece of an inch by about five. I do cut it down inch by four, inch by four. I think, I don't know if I got it down and I'm that it's petal pink and I'm going to stamp it in, um, crumb cake. And it looks pretty good. These two colors together. It's not, you know what I mean? I didn't know if I wanted to do black and then I thought, well, do I want to white emboss it? You know how it is. So it doesn't, it doesn't look too bad with this, um, crumb cake on petal pink. It actually looks pretty nice. I believe it is four inches long. No, it looks like four and three quarters inches long. So it's, perfect uh, for the top of this card base because remember it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then I want to stamp a, a um, large starfish on some basic white I do that again in petal pink and then we are going to take a I don't know I don't want to call it a mask maybe a helper to cut out this um, starfish because it was very difficult to line up. When I did line it up, I thought, okay, I got it really good. I spent some time and it was completely off. So I'm gonna take a, re a, a good amount of time, you're gonna see, lining up my, um, my helper piece of paper so that I can place my die in here and get it exactly correct. So I'm gonna plop this down and really, like I said, I'm gonna spend a lot of time, you'll see, um, using my die and just finding where it is exactly right. Cause there's five little prongs that you have to get on. You know what I mean? And there, if you move one over, then all five of them move over and it's just, um, you know, there it looks right, but no, not really. It needs to get scooched over a little bit more cause one's more, one's on, you know, one has more white on one side, one, <laughs> It, it was a challenge. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. And I really think that you should 
use this method when cutting these out if you want a really good um, a really good die cut that has the starfish that's the starfish in the middle as possible. It's really easy to make this helper. I don't know what it's called. If you guys know what this little piece of paper that I want to call this helper is, all you do is you run it through, you run the die through with nothing on it. You just run it through the um, your mini emboss and you die cut a starfish outline. You know what I mean? And then you cut it down so it can, you know, not too much bigger than what you need. And then um, you have your little helper and I'm going to save mine because it worked really, really well. And then you... Um, piece together your die where it go, you know, it just flops back in there where you place your die back in where the die cut line is showing. And then I taped my, um, my, my die down and then the helper to the white cardstock that I had stamped on. I hope that makes some sense. So I have two pieces of tape there and I run it through my mini emboss just to have brand new plates on my mini emboss. I just threw my other one away. I always die cut on one on one plate and leave the top plate um, mark free so that I can then switch it up. When this plate is completely ruined, I will then switch it up so that I always have one new plate on the top so that it doesn't have any of those weird marks on. You know when you're die cutting and you have some weird marks? because your plate is a little bit, mm -hmm, yeah, I don't have that anymore because I use one plate that doesn't have any embossed, you know, any cut marks on it. I'm just gonna um, use some adhesive here to put this down. I think it's pretty. Uh, I first start with liquid, liquid adhesive and then uh, I go to dimensionals. So here I'm like, oh, that's right. I wanted to use this. I think it adds something extra, some texture to it. I know we have a lot of texture on this card. I do use my stamp and seal plus because I glue did not work for me to, you know, maybe this is the time to use Tombow Mono because glue did not work for me. I popped this up. Um, but I know we have a lot of texture on this, but this, um, looks like almost burlap. I know it's not, but it, you know what I mean? It's really, and even in your hands, it's not a soft ribbon by far, by any means. It's not, it's not soft. It's uh, actually very rough. And I think that you can tell that um, just by looking at it, you don't actually have to feel it. So I think that's, it makes a really nice, um, a, you know, really nice texture on it. Now I really want to see the middle of this starfish because I think that's the best part of the die cut. So I scooched mine down. I probably would have liked the happy birthday a little more up, but I didn't make my cluster there. I my happy birthday I think is a little bit um, a little bit cockeyed, not the stamp, but actually the piece of petal pink. So I move it here in just a minute. But I really like this is where I decide I need dimensionals for my um, for my big starfish here. I really like the starfish on top, you know, a little bit peeking over like it's, you know, crawling over the happy birthday. I don't know. I mean, I, I really wanted some black or some a darker color to ground this more, but there just was no, uh, you know what I mean? There's just no color to ground it. So let me know if it's too washed out um, because it is uh, crumb cake, basic gray, basic, nope, not basic gray, basic beige. Uh, and basic white and a little bit of uh, petal pink. So, mm, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of bland in a way, but I didn't know else, how else, you know, the colors, I didn't know else how to make it pop. So let me know if this, you know, if the pop worked with all the texture on it. Let me know what you think of this. Um, this, these die cuts, this card. Uh, let me know if you have this set. Um, you know, comment below. That really helps me out. And if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe. That would really help me out. Just going to make sure that my sentiment strip is straight because that's always important on a card. Well, at least I think so. So uh, last but not least, I'm going to add in some um, twinkle, some gems, some, some something, something. And uh, this Latte Love uh, 
I, oh, what do I want to call them? The, you know, the set that goes with Latte Love had these uh, a little bit darker brown. So that worked. And it does have that um, petal pink in it. But I, I chose to go with the darker, I think it's pecan pie or whatever. But, um, or you could use some silver gold or rose gold, whatever. And just let me know what you think. You can always put any kind of, you know, regular rhinestones on it. But let me know what you think. I'd love it. Again, like I said, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. That would really help me out. Um, Seaside Wishes and Sweetly Scripted are the names of these sets. Thanks, friends.